In this video, I'm going to go over uh, setting up a Sony camera to use with the time-lapse plus view intervalometer. Sony's had some limitations with uh, tethering, and I'm excited to see that with the latest generation of cameras, they've made some significant improvements, specifically being able to save to the camera's card, which saves the overhead of having to transfer it via USB. And so that's uh, with the uh, A7R 3 that I've been renting this week, and uh, the same should be with the A9 as well. But there are a couple things to keep in mind when setting it up, so I'm going to go over those right now. I'll turn it on. Go into the menu. And to start with, we'll go to the setup uh, menu here. We want uh, setup 4. USB connection, that should be set to PC remote. Um, this doesn't matter. USB power supply, I'm a little uncertain on this. This is uh, if the camera should try to charge while it's in use and the view can only supply so much. I would say uh, keep this off for now until uh, it's tested more. Uh, and then PC remote settings. This is the uh, exciting new feature with the A7R 3 uh, We can choose to, rather than just PC only when tethering, uh, we can save to uh, PC and camera. But for right now, I'm going to keep this at PC only so that we can uh, see what it's like with the uh, previous generation Sony cameras. So we'll go back to the main menu here. And a couple other things to set up. File type should be raw. Um, the format should be raw. The file type should be compressed rather than uncompressed. It saves a few seconds in the uh, USB transfer. And the rest of those things uh, don't matter right there. Um, but we also want to make sure that long exposure noise reduction is turned off. Now I'm going to connect this to the camera and we can either use the USB-C port on this one or the multi-port with a uh, USB micro B. Either way uh, seems to be exactly the same. <clears throat> now since the camera is set to PC only for the uh, destination when uh, tether tethering, um, we're going to insert the card into the view, cancel that, we'll go up to time lapse, and for this test I'm just going to set the interval to I'll do 10 seconds so we can see how much time it's taking to do the processing. And start. So we'll give this a moment to start up and then we'll watch on here. The blue time is the buffer time needed. So right now it's waiting on the camera, it's converting the photo, analyzing it, and there it's done. So out of 10 seconds, from here to here is 10 seconds, so we're looking at about uh, 6 or 7. So 6 or 7 seconds would be the minimal, uh, minimum interval in this configuration, which is actually pretty doable. So I'm going to stop this, and the next thing we want to do is try now saving to the camera, because this, uh, this is a new feature with the a7 uh, R3 or the A9. Oh, yeah, they're going. So now I've moved the SD card to the camera instead. And on this, I'm going to go to menu. Go back to the PC remote settings. And those aren't adjustable while we're plugged in, so I'll unplug this. Alright, so PC plus camera. Now we'll plug it in again. Wait for it to connect. We'll see a little camera icon up there. Now what this is going to show is we actually have uh, one more issue here in that even though Sony now supports uh, saving to the camera, it doesn't allow just pulling the thumbnail off. It only allows pulling the whole image off. So this actually won't be uh, any improvement, but the pictures do get saved to the camera. 
So I just started this. So even though they're saving the images to the camera, it's still downloading the entire raw photo across. And so we actually even have just a, a little bit longer on that one, but that might have been just that frame. So yeah, we don't have an improvement that way, except that we're saving to the camera's card, which uh, could be good in some situations. But now, if we go back here again, go to menu, I'll unplug this, and if we change the file format to RAW plus JPEG, we keep the JPEG quality as low as possible and as small as possible, then when we go back to the uh, PC remote settings, we can say um, the RAW plus JPEG um, PC save image. So this is saying like uh, which, which image is sent to the PC, which PC in this case is the view. And uh, we're going to say JPEG only. So now it only has to download the small JPEG. So if we try this again, the RAW plus JPEG will be saved to the camera, but only the JPEG will be copied to the view for analyzing for the exposure. So we're going to have more, um, uh, a shorter interval possible. Let this connect. All right. And start. So again, our whole range here is 10 seconds with a 10 second interval. And we'll see with this blue line how much time we have left. There we go. So it's right down there, closer to three seconds. So uh, we'd have a very comfortable four or five second interval uh, with this configuration. So this is big improvement. improvement. This is uh, very similar to using it with Wi-Fi, except that we have the right reliability of the uh, tethered connection. So there we go. Yeah, that's much shorter. So halfway here would be five seconds. So we're looking at about three or three and a half seconds for all the buffer time needed. So I will stop that again. And one more thing to demo now will be the Wi-Fi connection. And that is different now with the, uh, the A7R3 or the A9 because they don't have the App Store. So we're going to control with smartphone in the network menu. Turn this to on. <clears throat> now, when this is on, when the control is, uh, smartphone is on, it uh, doesn't uh, allow connection via USB. So it's not going to work, so you'll have to turn this off again if you're going to do it uh, with USB again later. And connection here. It'll turn on Wi-Fi. If we hit this... Uh, button, it'll give us the password. So we go into settings, wireless setup, connect to network, and we go right down here. We've got uh, this direct connection to the camera. And I've already put in the password there. So connect to that. Give this a minute to get connected. So again, we still have the card in the camera. And it looks like we've connected. So there we go. Uh, let's go up to, oh, it doesn't show the camera just yet. I'm still working on that. There we got, got the camera connection. It says Sony Wi-Fi there. So we'll go into time-lapse. Uh, same same settings here, same interval of 10 seconds, so we can see how this looks. We'll hit start. So this blue line, that's still at the position it was for the uh, tethered connection. So that one, that one took a little longer, but we'll see on the second once it's gone here. All right, my video camera overheated a little there, but uh, we're back and this is running. And so it's about uh, four or five seconds per frame uh, with Wi-Fi with this setup. So with the new 
A7R3, it shows that the best connection method is now USB with small JPEG and RAW saved to the camera uh, as described earlier. So uh, that's exciting that uh, Sony is making improvements in that area and hopefully they continue to improve and make it possible to just download the thumbnail which will speed it up even more. But uh, overall this is a good improvement for time-lapse control uh, with Sony cameras and it's exciting to see.